Speaking of differing approaches, we have a viewer from Hibbing that wants to know uh, what our panel thinks about the differing approaches relative to uh, frontline worker uh, pay uh, arising out of the uh, uh, coronavirus. Uh, this viewer notes uh, specifically and asks specifically whether or not our uh, panel members support the uh, the House's approach to uh, frontline worker bonus pay. And I'm going to start uh, with uh, you, Representative uh, Igo. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that issue. We'll, we'll hear from our two House members, and then we'll see what the Senate uh, what the Senate thinks about this. Representative Igo, the floor is yours. Awesome. Yeah, so the bill actually was just on the House floor today. Uh, we had some, some good debates on it and some good conversation. Uh, you know, th this bill, let's just go back in time a little bit, started last summer with a working group to create the plan that was going to work to, you know, those heroes, right? The people that are on the front lines during this pandemic, keeping us all safe um, and finding out what that number was going to be. Um, so fast forward to today in the session. Uh, the bill was $1 billion for a fiscal note. Um, and what I'll say right now is I support making sure we take take care of our heroes and give them that, that check on when they need it. Um, I'll tell you right now, I voted no on that bill today. And I'll tell you right now why I did. Um, of the 67 weeks outlined in the pandemic, you only needed to be working for two weeks of that pandemic. And when it came down to proving the fact that you were one of those frontline essential workers while working on the bill or working uh, during the pandemic, there was no audit or to make sure that was good. Uh, basically, the bill in the House, in, in my opinion, and, and a lot of my colleagues, when we went and, and read into this bill before we went to the floor today to vote on it, there's a lot of chance for fraud. Um, and, and the reason that that concerns me is because there is heroes out there. There's heroes all over the state of Minnesota that deserve that check. And I don't know if I want to see them being robbed of that by people that maybe are able to fraud the system. Um, and we need to make sure that the bill is cleaned up in that regard so the people that deserve it get it. The heroes get it. And that's what I can't emphasize enough. So I was a no today on the bill because of that process, because there was no audit, because there was no chance to make sure that it was done safely. And, 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 and I mean, folks, this, this is a billion dollars. This wasn't, you know, a 10 million, this wasn't a 20 million appropriation. We're talking a lot of money here and we have to make sure it's done properly so we can take care of those heroes that took care of us. Representative uh, Wozlowick, your thoughts. Um, so I voted for the bill because I think it's really important that we're including um, all of the frontline workers that were part of the efforts during the pandemic. Um, we had child care workers that were taking care of the uh, kids of essential workers, um, you know, nurses and doctors and other folks working directly with COVID patients, had kids in, in the school-based child care programs. Those folks were taking care of those, those kiddos. Um, grocery store workers who are still working through the pandemic, um, folks who are in our meat processing and packing plants. Um, just a whole lot of people who are who are working through the pandemic who deserve to have that additional bonus pay and so happy to support the bill if i remember correctly we did put an amendment on um, that would have a process in place for the um i think it was the ola to have some sort of audit capacity so there is there is something in there to that that regard um i don't i don't think we're going to see a bunch of frontline workers cheating the system i actually think it's offensive to to say that that's going to happen, um, but I, I supported the bill, and I'm, I'm glad to see that it's it's at least on its way to uh, having further conversations. Senator Rude, uh, frontline worker. Sorry, if I can respond to that quickly. Sure. sure. Go ahead. Go I, ahead. I just want to jump in there. I go. So, so the amendment that you mentioned there, uh, Representative Oswick, was was uh, to have the OLA go and audit it, which I supported. Um, but then, then uh, an amendment to the amendment put on to make that optional, so it's no longer required. And I'm not suggesting that heroes would go in there and do it, but in the bill, it says when you when you apply to receive the $1,500 check, if it cannot be proven, the department is to give the check under the guise that you are indeed de uh, deserving of it. So there is no checks and balances there. So anyone could go and make up a thing about how that they were a frontline worker and get a $1,500 check, and that's taking away from the actual heroes. And those are the two reasons that I was a note today. I just want to clarify that. Senator Rood, I, if I thoughts? can respond quickly. What, all right, fine. We're great. Why don't you respond? Yes, I think, go ahead. I think the, the amendment, it, the reason it was changed to May was so that we could actually have that opportunity, but not force someone to do that when we weren't providing them the resources to do that. So I'm, I was happy to vote for that, happy to see it put on. I think it's something that we can have them look into, but I, I think permissive rather than requiring that is, is um, important to that office so that they have the resources to do that. Senator Rood. Your thoughts, frontline worker pay. 
Um, well, I think it's very important. I don't think we've had this conversation yet in the Senate. Um, it hasn't come to the floor. So I don't think we fully vetted um, uh, what we're gonna do in the Senate. Um, I know that we had uh, our working group uh, that was tasked with spending, I believe, $250 million. And I think they came up with a program to do that. And that's what they were tasked to do. And so um, I don't think they added a whole lot of added spending onto that bill because that's not what they were tasked to do. So um, I look forward to that coming to the Senate floor. Um, and I'm not sure when it, when it, when it will be there. I'm not on the, the working group. Senator Putnam. Yeah, so I'm actually a co-author of this bill in the Senate. And um, like Senator Root, I can't wait to actually get a chance to talk about it on the floor. Um, once we get it passed and actually get relief and respect the people who worked so hard uh, over the past two years, um, but also so that we can iron it out and make it as perfect as we can. Um, you know, uh, one of the big sticking points in the initial formulation of this, when we agreed to spend $250 million, so we're really talking about an additional $750 million, but $250 million was already kind of committed to. Um, and in that initial plan, one of the sticky points was what counted as a frontline worker. Uh, and I think that there was a good argument that said you had to be in direct exposure to COVID patients. But I thought about that a lot since then. Um, and I now believe that a more expansive definition of what a frontline worker is makes a lot more sense. Because when you think about that nurse who had to go to work and had to take care of people in a COVID wing, there's a good chance that he or she had to take a bus to get there. And the person who drove that bus was just as exposed to COVID as was the nurse. And that nurse wouldn't have gotten there to do that job if that bus driver hadn't showed up. And we can't for a second think that a public bus is in any way more hygienic than where that nurse was working. So uh, there are so many people who contributed so much. Think of the meatpacking plant workers. You know, uh, without them, we wouldn't have bacon, which is a tragedy of its own, but we also wouldn't have a surplus. The surplus is a direct function of these people going out to work. It's, it's a direct math situation. I mean, that's, that's why we have a surplus is because people went out to work over the last two years. So when we talk about returning the surplus to taxpayers, to people who earned it, this is a great way to think about that. The surplus is a direct function of that bus driver, of that meatpacking plant worker. Um, and I think that this is a fully appropriate and morally appropriate, as well as practically, way of uh, using these resources.